right, we're here with the detention deputy, Deborah Taylor. Now tell us a little about of what you got going on at your booth today and exactly what is, what is it you're doing. This is an example of the hydroponic greenhouse and fish farm that we have at the jail. A very, very scaled down version, but the principle still remains the same. It's a completely water-based environment. We don't use any soil. Uh, materials that we do use are either biodegradable or reusable so that we can reuse things again and again. Also, the fish are providing the fertilizer, the nutrients for the lettuce, and then the lettuce is cleaning the water for the fish. Okay, that sounds good. So what kind of fish do you have in here? We have tilapia. They're very small. Um, everything that we raise, uh, we catch the eggs ourselves, and we can raise them to be about a pound a piece, but the tanks that they grow out in are about 12,000 gallons. So the hydroponic garden is located at the detention center, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. It's at the Seminole County Jail. Now tell us a little bit about the program you have there, whether it's for the inmates that are, you know, participating in the garden and keep, with the upkeep and how it can benefit them and the rest of the center and the rest of Sanford. The inmates that work in the uh, greenhouse and the uh, fish house are all female. Um, all the work that we do out there for the harvesting, even the building, creating the whole project, they do all the work for me. They even harvest and clean the fish. And it has seemed that women have such um, a deeper effect or are affected more deeply by the work that they do out there. It helps them get an opportunity to develop nurturing skills that because of their environment, their background, um, where they're coming from and the reason why they're in jail to begin with, those sort of things have never had a chance to properly develop. And you walk out into the greenhouse and they're immediately hit with that wow effect, but there's also that universal sigh of relief that you just feel that releasing, that letting go, and everybody just seems to kick it down a notch and start to relax and enjoy what they're doing when they get out there. So run us through this chart you have here about the process um, from A to Z. What we have is these tables um, are constructed the same way I have set up here. I haven't used anything different. That these are just vinyl downspouts that you can get from your home improvement stores. And each downspout is set on the table, set at an angle so that the water is pumped to the head of the table and it runs downhill to a collection tank and a trough at the end of the table. That's called an NFT or a nutrient film technique. Uh, by doing it this way, we have about 160 heads of lettuce on every table, and I've got 18 tables set up that way. In this picture, you can see the different stages of growth, that these are seedlings that have just sprouted, these are a few weeks old, and then the ones in the background are ready to harvest. By doing it that way, we always have a continuous harvest. It takes three tables in order for us to feed dinner to 900 inmates. So we'll have three tables that we harvest, but then two weeks later we have three more tables behind that ready to go, so that the greenhouse is always in a continuing cycle. So I know earlier you were telling us about your massive plant you have back here. So uh, let's come on around and see, get some more information about that. There aren't any pesticides that are used in the greenhouse. If I do use any kind of spray, it's biological, like a soap or a pyrethrin or something of that nature. And we use what's called a banker plant. The plant is infested with insects that eat the plant, but then those insects that are eating the plant are attracting other insects that eat those insects. Uh, so they become beneficial insects that are eating my bad bugs. By taking this plant into the greenhouse, I'm introducing that beneficial insect and it's going out and eating the other bad bugs in my greenhouse without me having to come in and use sprays. We're using uh, a parasitic wasp on aphids and a parasitic uh, spider mite on spider mites on this plant. And then we also have back at the greenhouse papaya trees that we're using to help control the white fly also with a parasitic wasp. That is amazing. All right, thank you, Deborah Taylor, for inviting us into your booth and giving us the lowdown on the hydroponic garden and the plants and the aphids and everything you're doing. Where can we find out more information about um, the process? We can um, be located at SeminoleSheriff.org. Uh, there's information there. And then I can also be emailed if you want any further information about the program that way at detailer at SeminoleSheriff.org.